So Descartes' rule of signs, basically what Descartes' rule of signs tells us is not only what the rational zero, the rational zero test tells us the possible rational zeros. Descartes' rule of sign tells us how many real positive, real negative, and complex zeros we have. Because remember, you can have solutions that are complex, right? You can have i as a solution, right? Right? Yes. Remember we did that for quadratics? We had like square roots of, I, of negative numbers, which was a complex, it was still a solution, but it was complex. And what that meant was if it was a complex solution, Miranda, it didn't cross the x-axis, right? Only real solutions cross the x-axis. Now, in this problem, we have three zeros. All of these zeros are real zeros, right? So we know there's no complex solutions, correct? But that's because we know what the answer is. Well, what if I give you a problem, though, and I ask you, what are, our, what are the number of positive, negative, and complex solutions? You'd want to use Descartes' rule of signs. And Descartes' rule of signs works like this. To find the number of positive real solutions, all you simply do is take the function. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. You just take the problem and you find the number of sign changes between the terms. So I'm going from a positive to a negative. That is one sign change. Anytime you go from a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive, that's a sign change. So you take the number of terms minus an even number. Can I subtract an even number, let's say 2, from 1 and still have a positive number? No. So therefore, there is one real positive, one real positive solution. OK? Nope. Now we've got to figure out how many negatives there are. So to find the negatives, you're not going to use f of x. You're going to now figure out what is f of negative x. So now, instead of using x, I'm going to replace negative x. Does everybody see what I did? I changed the input value to a negative instead of the positive x. Now we've got to simplify this, though. So please remember, anytime you have a negative number raised to an odd power, that is always still going to be negative. Anytime you have a negative number or variable raised to an even power, it becomes positive. So therefore, this simplified is negative x cubed. That becomes positive. That becomes positive minus 15. Everybody see what I did, how I did it? Make sense, Presley? Anthony? Then we count the sign changes again. Well, we have one sign change, and we have another sign change. So, yes? Here? Negative x squared is positive x squared, right? Times. Huh? Two, but you always got to subtract an even number. So can you subtract an even number from two and still have a positive number, or at least a number? Zero. Two minus, two minus two is zero. So your answer is two or zero real. How? No. No. Two is the number of sign changes, right? You subtract an even number from the number of sign changes. So what's the only even number you can subtract from 2 that would still have a number that's not negative? 2 minus 2 would be 0. So you have two options here. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, solutions, zeros, yes. Well, let's call them I did the solutions. Solutions are the zeros, though, right? Yes. OK. So the next one is to find the number of complex. Well, to find the number of complex, I prefer to use a box. Okay, So let's go through and talk about this box. For the box, ah, whoa, nice. OK. For the box, we have positive, yes? Uh, so you know how you uh, minus the number? Yep. 
I could, I do. But what's one minus two? Is negative one. You can't have negative one of something, right? You can't count, you know. So, and complex. And then total. Okay. So. I like to use the box because the question on your test might say, hey, how many complex zeros are there? Or what is the possible number of complex zeros, right? So in this example, first of all, let's look at the degree. What does the degree tell us? The degree tells us the total amount of zeros, positive, negative, whatever. How many total zeros do we have? Three. Right? Everybody agrees with me on that, correct? Yes? Okay. So then we just fill in what we have. We know that there is one positive real zero. Negative real zeros, there's either two or zero. Now again, guys, I'm kind of cheating because I already know what the answer is. But the next problem you guys are going to do, you're not going to know what the answer is. So that's why this is really important to do, follow this process. So if let's say I have one positive, two negative, how many complex do I need for a total of zero, three? Zero. If I only had one positive and zero negative, how many complex? Two. two. So do you guys see how the number of real positive and negative plus the number of complex always gives you three? Okay. And so basically the number, so if I asked you on your test, what is the number of possible complex? You would say there's either two complex or there's zero complex numbers. Well, as long as the degree is three. If the degree is 5, you'd have to have a total of 5, right? Yeah, and let's look at our answer. Does our answer actually follow one of these columns? 1 positive, 2 negative. 1 positive, 2 negative. 0 complex, right? That works. Cool. What's complex? I. Remember i's? Like the square root of a negative number? And remember when we found i, remember it was always plus or minus? So another thing for you guys to note is complex numbers always come in what we call conjugate pairs. If you have the positive, you're always going to have the negative. Yes? Well, there, we don't know what they are. It's not telling you what the zeros are. This doesn't tell you what the answers are. It just tells you how many there are. There wasn't. This was the correct answer for this polynomial. What Descartes' rule of signs tells you, it doesn't tell yeah, it's like, an, it's like this column or that column. And it's just telling you what's possible. Just like the rational zeros. These aren't all the zeros. These are the possible zeros, right? These are all the zeros, which were part of possible. This isn't telling you how many zeros are. This is saying it's either this or it's this number of zeros. Does that make sense? OK, so it's just telling you what a possibility is. So a lot of students don't like it because it doesn't, I mean, it's helpful.